In this video, we'll be taking apart the Pixel 8a. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. Before we start, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Looking at the SIM tray, we can see a black rubber gasket around the opening. Now heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hairdryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a look at the plastic backplate. The camera lens cover can be replaced by applying heat and prying that portion off. So you don't need to take apart the phone to replace that. At this point, there are 17 T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. The flex cable for the LED flash needs to be peeled off from the metal plate. The wireless charging coil and NFC antenna are located here. Here's a look at the other side. We can also see a large area of graphite film to help transfer heat. Now the battery cable can be disconnected. In order to remove the battery, there's a pull tab provided to help you pry it off, but based off the previous Pixel phones, I really don't like this pull tab, so I'm still going to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply it to the sides of the battery, and let it sit for about 20-30 seconds so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Prying the battery off will take some time, since the adhesive being used is really sticky and strong. Aside from that, looking at the battery, we can see the typical capacity is 4,492 mAh, and the rated capacity is 4,404 mAh. However, on the bottom of the battery, it's also written 4,448 mAh, so I'm not really sure why there's a third capacity written on the battery. 
There is an additional T4 or Torx 4 screw which needs to be removed. Here's a look at the top earpiece speaker assembly. And there's a rubber gasket around the opening. There's an antenna line drawn on the corner of this plastic cover, which is that light gray color line. Once the main board has been lifted up and folded over, we can see the flex cable for the screen which is connected over here on the back side of the board. The metal cover needs to be removed so the flex cable can be disconnected. So when it comes to replacing the screen, all you would have to do is heat up the front side of the phone and pry the screen off at which point you would have access to disconnecting the flex cable from the main board. So you wouldn't have to take apart the rest of the phone to replace the screen. Taking a look at the main board, we can see the 64 megapixel primary camera and the 13 megapixel ultra wide. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's copper tape on the shield's top transfer heat, a liquid damage indicator sticker on the charger port, as well as a red rubber gasket. The primary microphone is located here next to the charger port. Here's a look with the removable shield removed, as well as the copper tape peeled back. We can see thermal pads on these chips. Here's a look with the thermal pad removed. Looking at the other side, we see the 13 megapixel front facing camera, the proximity and ambient light sensor, a thermal pad here and one which goes over here to help transfer heat, which are seated on top of graphite film, a copper plate, and more copper tape underneath that, which all work together to help transfer heat away from the processor and components, the SIM reader located below that, and some more copper tape on the shield to help transfer heat. As for the camera connectors, those can be disconnected by just popping them off. Now when it comes to the charger port, it's soldered to the board, just like previous generation Pixel phones, so replacing that isn't going to be easy. Here's a better look at the copper heat plate once it's removed. Once the removable shields have been removed, we can see a thermal pad on top of the RAM and processor, as well as these chips. Here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. And here's a look at the bottom speaker assembly. There's a mesh filter and rubber gasket over the opening of the speaker. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner, which is held down with some adhesive. To replace that, just apply some heat and pry it off. There's also another liquid damage indicator sticker, which is that white sticker, which is on the frame underneath the sim reader. To remove or replace this flex cable, which connects the power button, volume keys, secondary microphone on the top corner, as well as the LED flash, you need to remove the two T4 or Torx 4 screws, which are holding that metal plate to the frame, at which point you would be able to peel off that flex cable and remove it. And for removing the power button and volume keys themselves, those can be replaced by just pulling them out of the frame. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply the backplate. Flip over the phone, 
power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.